Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, January 10th, 2020. The ruling class is horrified. A December 27, 2019 article in the Wall Street Journal entitled Rank-and-File Workers Get Bigger Raises by Eric Morath and Jerry Sparshot pointed out the following. Wages for rank-and-file workers are rising at the quickest pace in more than a decade, even faster than for bosses. Now That's a sign the labor market has tightened sufficiently to convey bigger increases to lower-paid employees. Pay for the bottom 25% of wage earners rose 4.5% in November from a year earlier. That's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Wages for the top 25% of earners rose 2.9%. Similarly, the Atlanta Fed found that wages for low-skilled workers have accelerated since early 2018 and last month matched the pace of high-skilled workers for the first time since 2010. Nick Bunker, an economist with the job search site Indeed.com, said, quoting now, A strong labor market makes the bargaining power of lower paid workers more like the labor market higher wage workers experience during good times and bad, end of quote. Non-supervisory workers earned an average of $23.83 an hour in November, according to the Labor Department. Managers earned about twice that much. The effective labor pool is smaller than what it has been in the past, says Tony Darden, Muya's president. As you look to bring on folks, ultimately higher wages are used to attract them. Now isn't this good news for everyone? With more people getting paid more money, fewer people will be dependent on the government and our economy will be even stronger. So why is this good news horrifying to the ruling class? Well, the answer is sad but obvious. The ruling class only cares about perpetuating its own power, and they see this good news as a threat to their power. Now, throughout history, the ruling class has gone by different names. They've been called kings, queens, warlords, czars, and other forms of royalty. However, their basic position on how the system is supposed to work has always been the same. We know best, so it's your place to do what we tell you to do. You are not allowed to question our judgment or our authority. You work, we take what we decide is proper, and you'd better be grateful for what we leave for you. Hmm. Sometimes the ruling class convinces their subjects that the subject's very survival depends on having the ruling class protect them from invaders or thieves. Sometimes the ruling class uses physical threats or threats of imprisonment, Sometimes they threaten to take even more or give back even less of what they've taken. But the message is always the same. Obey or lose what you have. The ruling class has learned that they can't extort every group in the same way and stay in power. They need to find a way to placate the most wealthy and the least wealthy among us. The most wealthy have the resources to actively oppose the ruling class and they have to be kept somewhat mollified. The least wealthy have the least to lose and may rebel more readily. So, the ruling class gives the most wealthy a portion of what they took from the workers and they allow this group to have monopolies and other benefits that allow them to become even more wealthy. Of course, the ruling class always maintains control by warning the most wealthy that their benefits can be taken away at any time if they get out of line. The ruling class makes sure to give the least wealthy another portion of what they took from everyone else. They are happy for the least wealthy group to depend not on their own production, but on bits and pieces of what was extorted from the rest of us. As long as the least wealthy believe that their very survival depends on the largesse of the ruling class, they will support the ruling class. Of course, the rest of us, the great majority, will tolerate the ruling class only if we can survive on our own even after the ruling class extorts more and more from us. Consequently, the ruling class desperately tries to keep us believing that we cannot survive and care for our families if we upset them. The ruling class's worst nightmare is that we will wake up and discover the truth that they're really just a bunch of unnecessary parasites enriching themselves at our expense. 
Now, these improvements in wages are no surprise to anyone who understands the basic concepts of supply and demand. If you have a limited amount of something that's needed, its value goes up. If the economy has improved enough that people are hiring and there's a shortage of workers, then what's going to happen? Well, obviously, pay and other benefits will have to increase in order for employers to attract and retain good employees. Suddenly, employees are even more valuable. Now, this is good for both job seekers and current employees. If they can get more pay and better benefits at another job, why are they going to stay with you? The ruling class is worried. They've been telling the least wealthy group that they just can't make it on their own. But now, lower skilled people can increase their income without a government bureaucrat forcing an employer to raise their wages. Now, this is not good for the ruling class if people think that they can do things for themselves. Now, maybe they'll even start thinking that they don't need the help of the bureaucrats who are carrying out the policies of the ruling class. In conclusion, even more disturbing for the ruling class and their minions is the fact that this growth in wages has occurred under the crippling income payroll tax system. If the fair tax was adopted, the economy would grow even faster, competition for employees would increase even more, and wages and benefits for all types of employees would continue to increase. In addition, the fair tax eliminates one of the ruling class's most powerful weapons. With the fair tax, the ruling class can't single out specific groups to punish by raising their taxes or changing their deductions. With the fair tax, any change will apply equally to everyone and all of us can see it. One of their most effective methods of pitting one group of citizens against another will be gone. Now, ignorance is the enemy of freedom. When people finally see that what the ruling class has been telling them is a lie, they'll finally realize that they don't need the ruling class to survive. They'll quickly understand that they don't need a group of people whose only purpose is to divide us, steal from us, and live large off the fruits of our labor. In the Lincoln-Douglas debates, Abraham Lincoln said, quoting, It is the eternal struggle between these two principles, right and wrong, throughout the world. They are the two principles that have stood face to face from the beginning of time and will ever continue to struggle. The one is the common right of humanity and the other the divine right of kings. It's the same principle in whatever shape it develops itself. It's the same spirit that says, you toil and work and earn bread and I'll eat it. No matter in what shape it comes, whether from the mouth of a king who seeks to bestride the people of his own nation and live by the fruit of their labor, or from one race of men as an apology for enslaving another race, it is the same tyrannical principle. Now, isn't it time that we tell the ruling class that they have to start producing their own bread and stop stealing ours? Isn't it time that we demand the solution that so terrifies the ruling class? Pass the fair tax the only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 